This is the Shock Absorber Netball Academy at intersport.com. There are three core skills that every netball player needs to master, no matter the position you play. Passing, catching and movement. In this guide we're going to look at the different types of basic movement that you'll see in a game of netball. When your team has the ball, movement is about getting free and creating space in positions that you can receive a pass and help move the ball down court towards your shooters. In defence, movement is about getting into good defensive positions, restricting the movement of the opposing team and slowing down their attack. If you want to become a great netball player, then you can and should work on developing your movement skills. This means working on fitness, speed, footwork, agility and awareness. Let's look at the basic movement types that you'll see in a netball match. During the course of a one-hour game, all players will move at varying speeds, walking, jogging, running and sprinting, and in all directions too, forwards, backwards and sideways. Changing direction regularly to lose a defender creates space or move to a better position when the opposing team is attacking. Let's look at a couple of key points of basic movement. Firstly, when you're stationary, you should be in a ready stance, with your weight slightly forward and on the balls of your feet, your head up and eyes on the ball. As the name suggests, in the ready stance, you're ready to move in any direction. There's some simple ways that you can improve your speed and acceleration. From a rolling or stationary start, push off firmly from your rear foot, taking a smaller first step, pulling your knee up and then increase to a full stride. Pump your arms to generate more speed and keep your head up, watching the ball. You can find exercises to help you improve your speed and acceleration in the drills and physical conditioning section of this academy. As well as being able to move quickly, you'll also need to change direction quickly too. This means developing good footwork and agility. Again, you can find exercises for this in the drills and physical conditioning section. OK, so that's the most basic movement covered. Now let's look at jumping and landing. For all players, especially those that play in the circle, being able to jump and land well is really important. Great netball players jump very high, catch well and land in a balanced position, even when they're under pressure. Let's look at some different variations of jumping and landing. You can get airborne to catch the ball either by leaping from one leg or jumping off two. Either way, you need to drive up from your legs and use your arms to propel yourself higher. Whether you land on one or two feet, you need to be balanced and ready to make a pass or set up to shoot. Most of the time, players are encouraged to land with one foot after another as this reduces stress on the joints and it's very clear to umpires that there's been no footwork infringement. A forward jump will make for a simple and controlled landing, but you can also initiate a direction change as you take off, catching the ball from one direction and landing ready to pass the ball in another. Different leaps and jumps will be beneficial in different situations in a game. Let's look at a few examples of leaping and jumping in different game situations. Firstly, in the circle. Jumping from two feet to defend a shot. And now, leaping to catch a pass from a teammate. And finally, leaping to intercept and catch the ball before it reaches a player from the opposing team. Another skill to master when jumping is a catch and release in the air. And you can even change direction too. This is a difficult skill to master and you need to know exactly where you want to pass to before you start the jump. The key to jumping and landing is gaining maximum height to secure the ball whilst maintaining control and balance and it's important to practice this regularly. You'll gain maximum height when jumping from two feet and using all the muscles in the lower body and arms to propel yourself upwards. Running and leaping will also gain extra height as the speed of the run is transferred into the leap upwards into the air. OK, so that's the basics of movement covered. Let's recap. When your team has the ball, movement is about getting free and creating space in positions that you can receive a pass. In defence, movement is about getting into good defensive positions, restricting the movement of the opposing team and slowing down their attack. When you're stationary, you should be in a ready stance with your weight slightly forward and on the balls of your feet, your head up and eyes on the ball. To improve your speed and acceleration, Push off firmly from your rear foot, taking a smaller first step, pulling your knee up and then increase to a full stride and pump your arms. You can get airborne to catch the ball either by leaping from one leg or jumping off two. Either way you need to drive up from your legs and use your arms to propel yourself higher and whether you land on one or two feet, you need to be balanced and ready to make a pass or set up to shoot. 
You can catch and release in the air and you can even change direction too. This is a difficult skill to master and you need to know exactly where you want to pass to before you start the jump. Finally, the key to jumping and landing is gaining maximum height to secure the ball whilst maintaining control and balance and it's important to practice this regularly. So that's movement skills one covered. Why not learn even more about movement and find out about techniques you can use to evade defenders by watching movement skills two now. Intersports.com, the home of world-class netball coaching online.